Hello and welcome back again to Rage Gaming and more Vessel of Hatred coverage. Today we're talking about the new DLC content and what's actually come with it. Seasonal mechanics, new ones. Yes, there's actually seasonal mechanics here. It's in fact still season six after all. That's on top of all the core stuff the DLC is introducing to the game at large. So here's just a quick and important overview of those new seasonal specific stuff for you to be aware of. Let's begin. First up, we have Realm Walkers and Opals, two very important things that are indeed tied to each other. To find Realm Walkers, you're going to see this new thing on your map as an event every now and then. These are called the Hatred Rising events. We'll start every 15 minutes, one somewhere in the original regions, or once an hour in the new Nihonsu region. They last a total of 10 minutes, so they're somewhat comparable to how you'd see a Legion event starting soon. It has its duration and ends when the next one starts somewhere else. The thing is, if you get there and do it and go into the portal that's going to open from it, you have the time that you have. It's the 10 minutes tied to the actual Realm Walker outside the portal that matters. The general point of these, though, is to go to a place and defeat the Realm Walker. That will open a portal to the Seething Realm, where we can get those seriously good rewards, most importantly, the new Opal items. The Realm Walker itself is like this big moving building with a portal on its back, but you can't actually damage it initially. So to get that portal to open, you need to defeat the Realm Walker. Since it's immune to damage, you need to anger it to actually fight it. Now, as a bonus tip about these events, they actually will count occasionally as grim tasks for your tree of whispers so it doubles up the value even there to actually fight it then you just go to it and follow it no matter what you do it's going to keep moving along so you got to keep up with it while you're chasing it it continues to spawn these new unique enemy types all around itself kill enough of these basic enemies and eventually some elites will spawn these are called the bloodbound guardians they're just simple elites there's three of them but they're kind of tied to the walker so as you're damaging them they'll teleport forward bound to the walker staying by it so again you'll have to keep chasing while you kill those eventually though you kill those elites and that makes the walker stop spawning these hatred spires which when you kill all three of those the realm walker is finally exposed with that it's a very easy enemy to kill to be honest and with its death it'll drop the portal we're after as well as a pile of xp for your efforts and rep as we'll talk about initially you'll enter a dungeon through this portal that very quickly shows you this realm gate. At the gate you have choices. These are torment challenges to gather opals. There's five kind of opals to consider but all of them provide a 30 minute buff that provides you with a 15% increase to monster kill xp that's almost double an elixir's and increased rep gain whenever you actually gain rep. That in itself is going to be incredibly valuable because while you're leveling you're going to want one running the whole time while you're progressing your paragon so most of the time you'll want that running as much as possible and then with the rep stuff you definitely want that going early into the season to get that complete. So the perks of these are pretty damn important. But yeah, there's five kinds of opals to consider. Here's how you target them via the realm gate. But the first option is to spend 200 sigil powder and then that will get you opals of torment. That's going to be a buff that provides you with increased artificer stones, boss summoning items and infernal compasses for its duration. Overall I see this is one of the most valuable opals for endgame farming your first proper set. Since you need to farm a lot of bosses for uniques let alone mythic uniques later on too. Also with the changes to infernal hordes and the compasses they're harder to come by in this season. So while infernal hordes remain yes incredible value content to farm the compasses are are actually rarer so using this opal to get more is a good idea. Having said that the value of this one is still closely followed by the socketables, materials and equipment opals early on. We need all of this anyway. So this is probably the most expensive opal to create 200 sigil powder compared to the other requirements we're going to talk about. Sigil powder as you should know comes from lots of content though like completing tree of whispers, say uh, just open world events, nightmare dungeons and then salvaging sigils you have as well. But that's just your first option. The next option is to choose to spend iron chunks. It was literally just one for me in the review build to get opals of gold. These when running result in increased gold drops so it's probably overall the worst option from the lot but if you do happen to need gold it is a nice way to have a consistent way to to increase your gains and it's super cheap to do. Third up, you can choose to spend 25 murmuring opals to get an opal of equipment, which results in increased equipment drops. Opals are currency that you get from completing random events in the world, open world, mid dungeon, whatever. And then you'd normally spend those on the purveyor of curiosities NPC in town, which by the way, this season is even better to gamble for items. Or maybe you'll buy whispering keys. 
It's nice to have another option to do with that currency though. But either way, increased equipment drops for 25 obols. It's certainly very worth it, especially early on when we're farming all the aspects we want to run or even say better rolls of them. Next, there's the fourth option here, which is materials. This by comparison only cost five murmuring obols. Pretty crazy to me because this was also one of the most important buffs that I ran a lot during the review build when we were desperate for materials to actually upgrade our gear and test stuff. It essentially just gives you increased herb and gathering material drops for its duration. And for just five obols, absolutely worth it. Beyond that, there's actually another they revealed that I never got my hands on in the review build, and it's this one, the Opal of Socketables, which required three Angel Breath to target as your reward. But as you can see, it's going to increase your drop rates for gem fragments, which will be even more important this season, since there's a new, higher level gem to craft that's going to cost way more. But also, it'll increase rune drops, which is going to be a major target in the opening days of the season as well, so it's another one that's very valuable. Hopefully then you understand from the Opal list that they're actually really valuable and you want to be doing these. But what happens after you pick something and spend the currency to target one of the opal types? Well, the gate opens a new portal for that focus reward. You'll progress through a familiar dungeon layout with basic enemies, events, elites, and all that kind of stuff. However, there's a chance you'll encounter an extra portal while you're going through called the Seething Rupture. Ruptures in this case gave me an instant butcher fight, which is always worth the kill, even more so in these early days. From it, I got multiple aspects, high value crafting materials like scattered prisms, and even high value recipe manuals to get my tempers upgraded. Plus I got a unique, so that's seven items total on top of the materials. Definitely can't complain about that. So if you do see one of these extra portals while you're going through the dungeon, absolutely go through them. When you're done, the exit portal will bring you wherever you went in, and then you can continue. At the end of this seething realm dungeon then, you'll find a chest with a challenge when you interact with it. It's just a short special fight that involves a bunch of basic enemies and four special elites called the Sentinel Guardians. After you clear all of that out, you'll have two chests to open at the end. There's the chest for the realm and the specific reward chest that you picked. So since I went for materials in this case, that's the chest I opened. And you can see how I got a pile of crafting materials just by opening this stuff, but also multiple opals of materials to use later, a couple legendaries, and even a high level rune. So pretty damn great. To say the least then, realm walkers are valuable and will want to be doing them semi often, whether you're initially leveling or doing your gearing up process. You'll always want the different types of opals on hand to pop for whatever relevant content you're about to do. And since all of them are going to increase your XP, that's great, but also the rep increase. So let's talk about that. We have the new seasonal rep system. And it's going to be a very familiar rep system. It's called the Zacharum Remnants, which is basically the holy order dedicated to the teachings of Akarat, which is a key figure in our new story. You'll have a brief quest line to introduce them as a mechanic like before, and it's just a seasonal loop rep system as always. You progress it, though, by playing. They've learned their lesson from the Helltide stuff, where, you know, you need to be doing content wherever and getting rep rewards from it, rather than forced into one thing. So, kill mostly anything, do mostly any system or content, and you'll just get rep. But you can increase the rep rewards via having any of the Opal buffs active, as I've said, but also by using the new Season Blessings Earn buff. This will just increase the rate at which you get rep. When you interact with a vendor, though, you can see how you're currently doing on the rep. And as you can see, it levels as you progress, capping out at 12, starting with low-level items like blues and material rewards, scaling to more valuable mats, legendaries, consumables, even higher-value materials, opals, and then eventually uniques. We do also expect that it will infinitely scale for tamer regular rewards to pick up, but in terms of, say, your season blessings, I would imagine your priority is going to be getting the max XP increase from monster kills, then the rep max increase, and then with the remaining three, whatever you're doing at that moment. So if you're about to do a bunch of obol gambling, you'll increase that one first. So that's the familiar rep system and generally the new seasonal stuff. I will also mention though the new modes, which are the big gauntlet overhaul named the Undercity and also the new weekly dungeon clear thing that we're doing called the Citadel. In short then, the Undercity allows you to target farm specific rewards by beating the time challenge within. Defeat specific tasks and enemies by packing efficiently, you'll manage your timer without letting it drop to zero and make it to the end. The setup is basically bringing the gauntlet systems they worked on that were cool just with lacking rewards or incentive and work it nicely into a meta and game option like it's going to be great for leveling but also the target rewards are going to be awesome too so it's very well done but just like citadel it's less seasonal and more big new core content after the dlc launch but speaking of the citadel that by comparison is just a massive dungeon split into three wings 
Each wing has one big bad at the end, with some unique challenges and mini puzzles along the way. You'll find it needs to be completed with two players or more though, otherwise it's impossible, since you need a second person to enter a different realm at the right time, or step on a plate to open a door. So it's physically impossible without minimum two players. That's why they introduced the new looking for party system. But that aside, the rewards are tied to a weekly cash. So you complete all three wings once a week and you get a hefty reward for your efforts alongside Citadel specific currency and cosmetics. The currency though can be spent with a new merchant right outside the Citadel for a variety of specific rewards or more cosmetics if you're collecting them. Overall, I liked it as a new endgame option that yeah, you only have to do once a week and it's gonna be a lot more interesting to do compared to world bosses, that's for sure. But yeah, there you have it. That's our quick overview of the new seasonal mechanics with that quick mention of Undercity and Citadel 2. Hopefully I've impressed upon you though just how impactful and useful Opals are going to be. So make sure you're regularly hunting down the Realm Walkers. If you guys have anything you'd like to add to this topic though, let us know in the comments. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you, and thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye